YouTube. Uh, today's uh, Marriage Monday again, and uh, today we're going to be talking about marriage and sexual relations. <laughs> so, we're going to start out with a, a, a key Bible verse for this. It's out of 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, verses 1 through 40. Now concerning the matters which about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman, but because of the sex, because of temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman should have her own husband. The husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights, and likewise, the wife to her husband. For the wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. So right there, a lot of a lot of people like to think that the Bible is um, something that's almost like sexist, like putting women in their own place and the man is above them. Right there in that verse, it, it strictly says that that is not true. It, it shows equality. It shows that we both have rights over each other's body, not just mine over hers, you know? Right. It's not showing that I'm the boss of her body and that, you know, she has no right to it. It's showing that we both have right to each other's body. In marriage, it shows that we, we, we don't own each other because that's not right, nobody's slaves. Um, <laughs> But it shows that we have equal right to each other's body. So, it, it, of course, in, uh, you know, we have to ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it says, do not deprive one another, except perhaps by, by agreement for a limited time, that you may devote yourself to prayer. Right there is talking about fasting. So, fasting and, and w because fasting is, is keeping your flesh from its main desires, so that you can give prayer prayer and thanks and uh, worship to God during that time so that you can um, get closer to God exactly get closer to the Holy Spirit you know and get get more full of it but then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control we all sin so we all have we all need God and have to have him for forgiveness and we all have to ask for that forgiveness and praise him for it um, it's just something we really need for each other this next verse, I'm going to go into a little bit more about us with it after I read it here. So, um, in 1 Corinthians 7, 9, But if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. So, I, I'm pretty sure we told you guys this, but my wife and I got married when we were when she was 16 and I was 19. Um, we did that because in our in our youth, we were we were both full of passion and we had premarital sex. So that led to a, um, an unplanned pregnancy with our youngest, or with our oldest, sorry, Evelyn. And, uh, and a lot of people wanted us to get abortion and to just end it there and just stop. But what we decided to do was to keep our baby, to get married so that no, neither of us would burn with passion anymore and we could, we could rectify our sin. So that we could come together in, in holy matrimony give our God, our lives to each other and to God and just to... And, you know. and it, would be, it would be a blessing for Evelyn too, to grow up in a home that was um, right in God's eyes. Exactly, and, and, and one that was together and not, and not you know, broken apart. I, didn't want, I did not want my daughter to be in a broken home. Yeah. That was something I just didn't want to do. I didn't feel it was right. I know in today's culture, it's something that we see it's normal, but I... In the words of David Platt, I wanted to counter culture. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think though the reason we ended up getting married too is because of the people that surrounded us at the time. My mom and I were actually the ones that told us, you know, what you guys did is a sin, and I want you guys to um, make a choice. Either Anna, you stay home with uh, with uh, Evelyn, and we'll help you, but you do not get to sleep around with Chris anymore. Or if you have no self control, and if you are lacking that, and if you're going to burn with passion. You need to come together with Chris, legally get married, and in God's eyes, and make it work. And so, uh, well, we had no time with So we, we decided <laughs> to get married. And by God's grace, like I always say, all glory to God, Nine, almost nine years later is why we're still here. So, man, that's really crazy to think about. Still burning with passion. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> <laughs> but the good kind. <laughs> yeah. So, Not burning. So. Yeah, 
Um, another verse that I, I, I found here that I really liked was, um, was, was actually from uh, Genesis. So it's actually pretty long though. So it, it's not just one verse, it's from Genesis 2. It's, it's strictly about how, how God created woman and man together to be one. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused, caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of man's ribs and then closed up the, piece, the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he had taken from the man. And he brought her to the man. And the man said, Now this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she, has, she was taken out of man. That, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. I love that verse because right there it shows that that we are all connected, we are all one with each other. I mean, um, the way God created woman was from from a man's rib. You know, he cut out this thing here and put it back. <laughs> and then she was just there and that's why that's why we feel so so comfortable, I think, in this 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 embrace right here. It's just because we want our rib to be that word. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is also very important because um, in our day and age, uh, premarital sex is okay. And I am nobody to judge because I'd be a huge hypocrite because mm -hmm. first of all, we did that. We did. And I would always encourage young women to uh, stay um, pure and save their virginity for their husbands. Because it, when, you, when you're intimate with your husband, it's more than just um, getting naked. It's a spiritual connection. You become one. It's not talking about just your body because I don't morph inside him. You know, I don't like go, <laughs> I don't. That's not, it's talking about our spirits. Our spirits become one. And there is such a deep connection when you're intimate with your husband. It's not just about intimate with someone you love. Right? It's about your husband. And it's it's such a it's a big difference, I can tell you guys, when you're intimate with uh, someone who is your boyfriend and someone who is your husband, who cares for you, who loves you, who respects you, who watches over you, who provides for you, who loves the Lord and leads you, leads your children. It's totally different. It's absolutely, the intimacy is totally different. So I think in that Bible verse, becoming one flesh, it is talking about intimacy, but it's also referring to our, our, our spirituality. Like, mm -hmm. Every time we uh, sleep with someone, part of our, our ourselves stays with that person, you know, and that's a, because it's a spiritual connection, it's a very scary thought for, um, unfortunately, for a lot of the young women who are sleeping around, for the young men too, uh, that are sleeping around, they're leaving bits of their spirits with all these people, by the time they get to their wife, there's nothing left there. And this is why we have no sense of knowing Oh, I don't love them, or they're not my true love. And love is completely a choice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why God is like so hard on this subject. So I Some people do make it hard to love. I'm saying. Oh, because we're sinners. You can't just like, love everyone. <laughs> well, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant like. Definitely takes compatibility. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, we weren't very compatible. We're completely opposite. I mean, brown and white mixes together to make a really delicious cinnamon. <laughs> I think that would be a really cool video to shoot though. The cinnamon and sugar? No! Oh. No! Like our, <laughs> how differences and how you can so if, if that's something you guys are interested in hearing, our differences and how we came together, you know, like that would be really cool. Comment below. Comment. Um, and then another thing that is really a, a common misconception in the Christian world is the, the fact that sex is not okay. In general, even in the marriage bed, um, a lot of people think that sex is something that's it's gross or it's sin or something like that. A lot, a lot of uh, a lot of marriage couples have a lot of issues like that when they when they become Christian. A lot of newly Christian people do that as well because they think that oh we're, we're Christian now we can't be impure. There are still ways of being impure in the marriage bed, but sex in general is 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 uh, celebrated in the eyes of the God of God. That's as His gift to us in a marriage bed. That is something that we become, we come together in. We're one flesh. So, but but things that that can really, really um, be impure in the in the marriage bed are things like pornography. Can definitely that's a sin right there. Um, you cannot bring pornography into your bed. You know, into the marriage.
marriage world. It's a, it's a sin right there. It ruins your, it ruins your soul. Um, you can't bring, you know, of course you can't bring anybody else because it's just your wife. Yeah, that's, the that's Bible actually has a Bible verse on there talking about how it should just be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so, I mean, it, it, right here in, uh, in Hebrews 13.4, it says, um, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. It's not, it's not saying keep away from sex. It's saying keep sex pure. Keep it between a man and a woman, married, conjointed, in God's eyes, <clears throat> legally married. It, there's there's a huge difference. This, I know there's people who say, oh, we're what is that word called, babe? When they're like ten years married and it's like they don't have to be married, but they're legally married because they've been together for so long. Oh, uh, they call it common law marriage. That doesn't work either. Like I'm not judging anyone. That's just, the Bible says, you know, that baptism is kind of like a way to show everybody else, like, hey, we're gonna give our lives to Jesus. And to same way, legally getting married is showing to everyone, hey, we're gonna honor God's law and God, honor God to so kind of get that. And return that blessing of, trying, of being intimate and have God blessing that intimacy. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that you guys know that. And I know it's super countercultural for us to say that, but we're 100% believers because we've seen it in our lives a big difference uh, just from from the inside out looking at people who decided not to get married legally. A lot of the situations we see with a, a lot of acquaintances we've had where there's divorces, separations, cheatings, a lot of terrible things that makes me really sad could have easily been prevented. And, and a lot of them use the excuse, well, if, if God wanted me to have this, then, then why did he make this so much happier for me or something like that? You know, it's, and that's not the way it is. The devil, he will tempt you in any way he can. And, you, and the bed, the marriage bed, or just the bed in general, or sex, is a huge window for him. Huge. Huge, because we as humans are strictly love the whole temptation thing, especially in our culture today. Temptation's everywhere. Sex in general is everywhere. It, there's the books now, which honestly, that's still bad. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say it as it is, Fifty Shades of Grey. You need to be reading Fifty Shades of Bible, that's what you need to be doing, <laughs> because I can't believe people are actually taking this as foreplay. Well, that's that's another form of pornography right there. Yeah, that is it's, another it's, form it's of pornography. Reading, it, even those books, those, those um, erotica erotic books or the um, the what they call the um, what is that romantic romantic novels those are another form of pornography as well because it puts that that lust it puts that 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 unrealistic expectation into people's yeah right, and that's like me saying Chris why in the world where is your horse and why don't you have a ripped shirt down with hair flowing in the wind and Esmeralda Ana donde esta horse it's just like it's so unrealistic I've never even heard of that yes I keep yeah. Okay, anyways, Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, those things are ridiculous. And I heard, like, the dumbest quote the other day. And I said, um, love is fun when it's risky. Do you think HIV is risky? Do you think that's fun? I don't think that's fun. <laughs> like, I'm just telling you guys, there's so many forms. Like, when we talk about sexual immorality, immorality is like one thing, but then all of a sudden you open that door to sexual immorality and then there's like, there's oh, different everywhere. there's different forms. Victoria's Secret, you hear it in music. Uh, pornography can be in music. I'm um, sorry, do it like this and do it like that and like it when you, that's terrible like that. Like, why in the world do these songs make me, make my ears bleed? Like, <laughs> I can't even right now. Now again, all, our channel is mainly for Christian people. I know we're gonna get some haters, <laughs> haters. <laughs> who are, who are, who are gonna get on our page and say things. If you guys don't agree with us or anything like that, I apologize, just, uh, I apologize but open up your Bible if, if you really wanna understand what we're saying. I mean, I'm not saying we're 100% right. We still have a lot to learn just like everybody else. But um, I know what we're saying is accurate because it's strictly from the Word of God. You know, we're, we're using the Bible to to help give people advice. I mean, um, we have people that come to us who are our age asking us for marital advice or people that are even older because of the fact that my wife and I have been married for almost a decade. We're in our 20s. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think it's amazing because, and people always, I have gotten people ask me like, why do we talk about the Bible? Like, isn't there, it, couldn't you like uh, use like psychologists? Here's the thing. We've tried everything in our marriage prior to Jesus. And it wasn't until we came to Jesus Christ that our marriage changed. That tells me that Jesus has the answers mm -hmm. for everything. So 
And that's why my husband and I always lean on the Word of God and Jesus because He is literally what changed us, what changed our marriage and gave us a chance. And I always will say this, you guys will get super annoyed, I'm going to make this a hashtag, by God's grace, <laughs> hashtag God's grace, but by God's grace, this is why we are here and I pray that we're able to be here for years and years together. So that's, it was Jesus. <laughs> Seriously guys, I love him so much. <laughs> hashtag God's grace.